we would like to now start part two of the Marine Humanities session. I would like to invite Professor Kim Bite, visiting professor of the Department of Hotel Convention at Yongsan University. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Yes, my name is Kim Bitte, as introduced. Nice to meet you, everyone. In part one, we listen to a lot of interesting stories, and I would like to take off my facial mask, so I would like to ask you for your understanding. I am totally vaccinated. We heard a from uh, Professor Son Dongju of Pugyeong University, who moderated part one. And in part two, we invited content experts and also branding experts and some of the professionals who can actually assess the current status of this industry. And due to time constraints, I don't think I'll be able to introduce each and every participant. But I would like to proceed in this order. First, we will listen to the presentations of two speakers and then have some discussions and then have a panel discussion. I would like to now introduce uh, Mr. Muk Ji Su, the CEO of, of Site Branding. He will give the first presentation. Professor Bok is a very prominent figure in this sector, and I am very honored to have him as our speaker. So instead of reading the CVs of him, I think I can pass on the mic to him right away to listen to his introduction by himself. I think you also worked at the Busan city government, right? Yes, I worked as a campaign planner for the city of Busan in Seoul and in Busan. In the branding sector, there is a saying that branding equals to Mokjisu, your name. So what is the secret behind your success? Well, I don't think that is true. But we are running out of time, so you can proceed with your presentation. I think branding is becoming one language. So anyone can create his or her own brand. And this branding is based on experience. And a lot of time and efforts are required for branding. And I think branding does not happen overnight. Also, the branding for a city is a result of a lot of people's efforts and involvement. And today we are talking about pirates, but I think through these kinds of opportunities, we will be able to do a branding of our cities better. Yes, I think Mr. Mok will be explaining about how we can use marine contents in urban branding. Well, we have not seen any case of urban branding using pirates. And we are not arguing that we should brand the city of Busan as a pirate city, but we are just taking the example of Busan to show how pirates as a marine contents can be used for branding. Yes, let me start my presentation. My name is Muk Jisoo. And Mr. Lee, the keynote speaker of part one, explained very well about how pirates are depicted in 
cultural content, so I would like to skip some overlapping contents and just focus on the gist of my message. First, if we take a look at the changes in content consumption, I think we can see some changes in the consumption of broadcasting content. Now we are seeing some changes in consumers and multiple media are used for content consumption. And also the viewers are segmented into more detailed groups. And we are accelerating into a nano society. And you can see these TV series such as The Squid Game and The Cell of Yumi. In The Squid Game, Lee Jung Jae, the main character, is playing a big role. But there are also other sub characters like Ali or Jung Woo Yeon, who is a North Korean defector character. In the past, there was one main character, and all other characters were very depicted in a trivial way. But in nowadays, the sub-characters proportion in the contents is growing. So also, the same can be applied to the contents related to pirates. There can be more sub-characters that attract interest from the viewers. And also, the content's quality are, uh, is improving very fast. The TV series seem to be like a film. And uh, through the growth of the OTT market, we can see the growth of TV series, which resemble movies. And if we create pirate-related content, I think it could be a high-quality content, especially the younger generation, which are the main consumer of content. They are in a similar situation like pirates because they are living in an uncertain era and they are pioneering the uncharted waters like the pirates. So I think it can resonate with the young population. And I think the change of urban planning is also one factor that we can consider. Uh, the way people enjoy and visit cities are changing. And because of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of people are now passive in going out and visiting other cities. But once we go back to our normal life, people will be visiting other cities. And we need to think about how uh, these different information and different contents of different cities would be consumed by these people. I would like to skip these slides because these are overlapping contents. But one thing that is different is that I think more cultural contents are now breaking free from the traditional image of pirates. Uh, for example, in the past, pirates were depicted as a robber or a thief and who want to accumulate power for his own interest, but the pirates in this movie and animation, they uh, cooperate with other people to achieve uh, his own goal. And I think this is why many people are very fond of these pirate characters. And this is the flow of marine contents development. I think we need to break away from the way we have been analyzing the source of our cultural contents. We need to rediscover new aspects of pirates and redefine pirates and think about how we are going to uh, create these contents for urban environment and also marine environment. This is the element that I want to stress the most. 
on the surface, pirates have a certain set of images, but I think the company Apple really borrowed the spirit of the pirates in a positive way to imbue creativity among its members. And I think this is also the way forward when we are trying to grow cultural contents on pirates. We need to think about how we can differentiate ourselves, and we also need to think about how we can be purpose-driven, and we can also learn the spirit of loving one's co co colleagues through pirates. And then we would be able to think about better ways to implement our policies to create inclusive cities and uh, smart cities and so on. Um, as I don't have much time left, I will skip these slides. And there are also some possibilities to make festivals or organize festivals using the concept of pirates. I think pirates symbolize freedom and deviance from existing rules. So I think uh, festivals held under the topic of pirates can add fun to the lives of citizens. A famous pirate, Francis Drake, is born in the UK, and there is a pirate festival in this uh, city in the UK, but it is not that popular. But also in Korea, we have many regional festivals. So this pirate festival is uh, one of the regional festivals that is organized in the UK. And there is also a mermaid festival in Florida of the United States. And also in Laswell in the United States, there is a UFO festival. So these are all the festivals that add fun to the normal, uh, normal life of uh, citizens. And there is the Star Wars uh, Day. And the Star Wars Day is uh, celebrated across the world. The mayor of London congratulated the appointment of Prime Minister Thatcher and in the congratulatory message there was a mention about Star Wars and the sword of Star Wars and that actually uh, led to the creation of the Star Wars Day. But uh, this is not only for fun but also for the public good. So I think these kinds of festivals can serve as a source of creativity and also it can serve the role of attracting visitors and tourists to a city. And I think to deviate from our daily lives, I think we need to focus on some of the special places which we can focus on. For example, in Sapporo, there is this park, which is about 1.5 kilometers in length. And every year, there is a ski festival. And in the city center, citizens would be riding skis, and they would be doing snow fights, creating snowmen. And these are all examples are of deviating from citizens' daily life. Then how can we apply this concept to Busan? Busan's coastal line ranges across uh, 306 kilometers. So this is a very long coastal line. So I think we can probably utilize this coastal line of Busan. the brand value of pirates and the image of pirates, I think we can add this to the existing festivals of Busan as a small attempt. We also have some urban resources that we can use. For example, we can operate a program to experience pirate costumes and 
using the spirit of pirates, we could probably operate a pirate film festival or a startup con uh, contents or uh, hackathons. Or we could hold a pirate festival in Yeongdo. And I think Mr. Kim would know about this better, but I think we can use Metaverse to cre hold online pirate festival. And with that, I would like to finish my presentation here. Uh, Mr. Mo, thank you very much. You prepared a lot of materials, but I think to manage the time, you skipped many slides. Uh, thank you very much for keeping the time. And I don't think we need further discussions on your presentation. Well, I heard Mr. Kang is doing yoga nowadays a lot. And Professor Kang is the person who created the magic event in Busan. And I think many people might be curious whether Busan and pirates are connected or there, if there are any common grounds between the two, but also magic seemed irrelevant to Busan at first, but Mr. Kang made that connection between magic and Busan city. So across the world, how many universities have Department of Magic? Well, not many, I think. He is the person who established the Department of Magic at a Korean university for the first time. And you have a lot of famous graduates, right? What are the names? Yes, Yu Ho Jin, the female magician uh, who's very famous. She also graduated from that uh, this university, majoring in magic. So in the magic industry, uh, Busan is being known as the hub. So how did you start to focus on this contents of magic? Well, originally I was mostly doing the direction for festivals and organizing festivals, but starting from 20 years ago, I wanted to create my own work and coincidentally, uh, I met this person who was lecturing about magic at my university and having a conversation with this lecturer, I began to think that it would be good if I do something related to magic. So what were some of the obstacles that you faced? Yes, many people thought that magic was something irrelevant to Busan. And I had this planning document on my hands, and I visited the city government of Busan multiple times to persuade the government officials. Yes, comparing magic with pirates, what do you think? Is there any possibility that pirates can be used as a source of cultural contents. I think the speakers of the previous session explained very well. Busan City is a marine hub, and I think the ocean has some connection to pirates, and I think also, the citizens of Busan resemble pirates when it comes to challenge-loving spirit and their proactive attitude. And they are very curious to learn new things. If we 
are going to create a pirate festival in Busan. And if we are going to grow pirates into one of the major cultural contents of Busan, what should we do first to do that kind of branding? We've been in this COVID-19 pandemic for about two years. And uh, as we went through this crisis, I came to realize that there is one thing that disappeared because of COVID-19. Do you know what that is? There is one spirit that we lack now because of COVID-19. Anyone has the answer? It's one letter word. It's a one letter word. What is that? Tong, emotional attachment. Yes, it's hung, which means excitement. Well, I myself and my friends, I think we now lost excitement or interest in everything because of COVID-19. Still, when the COVID-19 broke out last year, even during the pandemic, with the spirit of a pirate, I organized an event where dozens of street magicians participate, and we organized this festival on the streets. So despite the pandemic, I think we can still organize these festivals in a way that doesn't go against the law. And I think this is one of the capacities that we need to develop. Yes, due to the shortage of time, I think we should end here. And I think we can probably have more discussions in the event that will be held next year. And I was able to feel the passion of Professor Ka in one of his events. He attracted global festivals to be held in Busan, and uh, many National Assembly members also participated in uh, that event. And I think if we can really develop the cultural content on pirates with that level of passion, we can brand any city into a better city with a cultural contents related to pirates. Now we would like to invite the second presenter, who is Professor Kim Chi Yong. Please come up to the stage. So, what is the topic that you will be talking about? Professor Kim Chi Yong, uh, for our audience, I'd like to briefly introduce him. If you go to Seoul, you can find it there, and also in Pohang, you can also find it there. So when it comes to um, video, IT, ICT, um, I think that he's been serving as a judge. And I think that he has uh, a lot of imagination, and uh, he actually has a talent for integrating ICT in many different areas. So he is a very creative uh, person. So today he's going to talk to us. Do we have a lot of time? Well, I will I'll keep it short. So uh, what is uh, the theme of your presentation? Well, I understand that we were supposed to um, end by 6.30. However, I am on stage at 6.30. Well, it doesn't matter. I think that we can continue on uh, regardless. Uh, I feel like being chased by pirates uh, again. Uh, well, it's a great honor to, uh, to address this audience and uh, my fellow presenters. So it's a great honor to uh, join the World Ocean Forum 2021. Uh, I am Kim Chi-yong from Zhongyi University. 
And this is my facial mask. I know that you can't really see it, uh, but uh, there's a logo that says, uh, be the proud uh, member of Tongyi University. Anyways, uh, I know that time is limited, and therefore I'm going to keep my presentation really short. I've actually checked out YouTube, and uh, yes, uh, we are very much live on YouTube, and uh, we also have interpretation service being provided. And I think that uh, because of the dialect that I use, I think that it's going to be very difficult to interpret. Anyways, uh, this is uh, the presentation that I have prepared prepared piracy and pirates and also a subject of content development. So uh, I'm not going to cover everything that's listed here because uh, I know that uh, Professor Kim Gite is going to hate it. Uh, so this is uh, the slide that I prepared. So here you can see Pirate, pirates, you know uh, what uh, pirates are, so I'm going to move on. And uh, here you can see some of the movies uh, that used uh, pirates as their key themes. Uh, you can also see animations and games uh, that also uh, have uh, pirates. There is actually a sound uh, to this slide, uh, but uh, I don't have uh, my mouse with me, so I can't really play it for you. But anyways, uh, here there is a theme song, OST, of the Pirates of uh, the Caribbean. Anyways, uh, the topic I'd like to talk about is uh, Pirates as the subject of content or content development. Pirates uh, frequently appear in animations. So Japan has been very uh, good when it comes to utilizing different uh, themes and subjects. Anyways, uh, this is an example of Korea. There was, I believe, a new movie that's about to be released uh, that also has uh, pirates as a theme. And uh, if you look at games, about seven, eight years ago, I believe that uh, they also uh, had a preview. But anyways, uh, they are still in the makings. But anyways, Ubisoft uh, France is currently uh, developing this new game, and it's about uh, to be uh, premiered uh, in the near future. And uh, I'm not sure, but uh, there was a game called uh, The Era of uh, the Great Oceans. So when we think about games and uh, content, pirates uh, did often appear, and uh, we would uh, get uh, indirect satisfaction by watching and playing the characters of uh, pirates in movies and games. And we also would uh, see female characters uh, in uh, the storylines. Uh, we talked about how in a very conservative uh, fiduciary society, um, how the female characters were not able to uh, get uh, much appeal. However, nowadays, uh, we see a lot of female characters in uh, these stories. And uh, we also had uh, characters like Kong Gil-dong, Im Kok Jung, and Jang gil -san, and uh, they, um, I think, uh, can be developed uh, in our games and movies. And if I have time, I hope that I can also utilize these uh, characters uh, for content. So why are they so popular? Um, I think that uh, in the 18th century and 19th century, these characters were popular, and uh, I know that uh, this is uh, sometimes uh, criticized as romanticizing uh, crimes, but anyways, uh, they do bring some satisfaction to the readers and the viewers. So using them as our characters, uh, we can uh, learn about, uh, we can actually go and uh, transcend uh, the good and the evil and uh, women and men and uh, many different distinctions. So ocean and uh, the content of piracy, I believe, uh, has a lot of potential for the viewers and uh, readers in the future. Here, the character says, uh, bring me to the horizon. So how are we going to utilize uh, pirates and piracy uh, to develop uh, interesting contents for various uh, media? 
So that's something that uh, is something that we need to think about. So thank you very much uh, for your attention, and uh, I hope that you can take me to that uh, next horizon. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kim. Uh, it's very regrettable that we can't uh, give you uh, more time for that interesting topic. Anyways, um, I believe that uh, for our international audience, uh, we are here sharing how pirates and piracy uh, can be utilized um, as an interesting uh, marine-related content uh, for various media. Anyways, um, I believe that uh, for the first time that uh, the 2021 World Ocean Forum has uh, paid attention to um, uh, the topic and the subject of pirates. And we are very grateful for that. And I believe that it's been four years uh, since uh, we first uh, introduced and this topic. In the past, uh, we've been only talking, we've only talked about engineering and technical aspects of marine. However, uh, humanities have been put aside uh, on the net back burner. So we have to admit that uh, in the past, uh, the marine humanities have been disregarded and ignored in a way. But uh, here uh, in 2021 uh, World Ocean Forum, we see the convergence of uh, marine humanities uh, with uh, other aspects of marine affairs. So I think that we need to go beyond uh, just uh, talking and over uh, pirates uh, as a joke or as a pastime. I think that uh, our next uh, speaker, Yi In Suk from Busan IT Industry Promotion Agency, uh, is here with us, and I think that she can uh, share it uh, for us uh, some light. Uh, on how we can better utilize uh, this uh, topic. Yes, I've been uh, working in my um, former organization for about 25 years. And uh, I think that since uh, Yi Inzuk joined uh, Busan IT Industry Promotion Agency, many, much has changed. And uh, I was there to witness uh, the very beginning of Busan IT Industry Promotion Agency. It has become a very uh, professional organization. And uh, since uh, she joined, I believe that uh, various industries and information-related uh, industries were actually integrated and converged uh, at the agency. That's one. And second, I believe that uh, for the general public, she's been uh, developing various training programs uh, so that uh, they can obtain some opportunities in the, the IT industries. And uh, she's, been, she's been very um, also helpful in integrating IT industry with other areas. So today, uh, she is going to talk to us about uh, how we can utilize the topic of pirates to uh, and combine that, integrate that uh, into the economy of Busan. Well, I'm not a designated discussant, and therefore I did not prepare any separate presentation material. But anyways, uh, earlier in part one, uh, we were um, here, we were able to learn about uh, speakers from the academia, about pirates, and uh, some of the speakers to touch upon some of the areas that I wanted to actually talk about. And if I may, I would like to talk about some aspects about pirates. We talked about in part one how, historically speaking, the history of um, Korean pirates is very limited. So do we have to utilize uh, pirates for content development as a subject? Instead, uh, some of the speakers uh, suggested that uh, we should focus uh, on uh, the Korean uh, traditional navy and how they were courageous uh, in defeating uh, pirates. Well, I also agree, and uh, I also agree that uh, data and documentation on Korean pirates are very limited and uh, it's close to non-existence. So is it uh, wrong to actually develop uh, content uh, based on pirates. Well, I don't agree with that. I, I also agree that uh, we didn't have uh, that much of a content in the past uh, using pirates as uh, its subjects. However, going to the open sea, uh, developing new territory, or engaging in international trading, that may not be part of the Korean history, but uh, 
having the know-how for international trading and also myth and also heroes, warriors. We didn't really have the right uh, characters uh, for those stories, and we didn't really have any content uh, developed based upon those. And uh, Professor Kim Chi Yong. Um, was not able to say everything that he wanted to say, but uh, if you look at the like, games uh, that have been developed, uh, we see a lot of pirates as main characters, and uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean uh, was able to achieve a economic success around the world. And other than that, uh, we also believe uh, that it can be used uh, for plays, uh, musicals, and etc. And I believe uh, that is the case because there are many attractive points associated with pirates. Yes, they're criminals. Yes, sometimes they can be brutal. And uh, they were sometimes rulers, uh, raiders. Uh, they would kill people. And so there are some negative uh, bleak images associated with them. However, if you look at uh, TV dramas and movies, uh, there are also some extreme uh, romanticization about the, these characters. But uh, if you think about it, in movies, uh, we have like dragons, uh, they're brutal, they kill people. However, we have the Beauty and the Beast, and also like Taming the Dragon, a movie. Uh, the dragons there are very nice. So content, don't uh, really have to reflect the reality, the cruel reality. I think that uh, we can uh, Think about another side of our reality, some opposite side of the reality, and actually incorporate that into content development. And as, as uh, people um, and consumers uh, consume those content, uh, I think that uh, they can also get some enjoyment. So pirates um, is no different. I believe that season two, going to the, going to the sea, um, is being developed, and uh, I think that um, in 2021 uh, we have some musicals uh, based on that theme. And Netflix, there was a movie that was released, and uh, one of the characters uh, was a spatial pirate, space pirate, captain. And uh, also, I was able to see a common denominator, and that is. Perhaps uh, we can uh, zoom in on uh, women pirates, for example, like Zhang Yisao. Uh, in that movie of Netflix, uh, the captain was actually Yi Te Ri, a female character. And uh, if you look at um, another Korean uh, pirate movie, Son Ye Jin was the main female character, and also uh, in part two or sequel, um, there was also, also a female character playing the lead role. So I think that uh, we can uh, give a twist uh, to the story by um, showing female characters in this content. So we have Busan. Uh, a coastal city, and given its uh, geographical characteristics, I believe that uh, pirates and pirates' content uh, can have a lot of appeal uh, to the audience. And uh, there is Yongdusan Park, and uh, using IT, we were able to create a metaverse. And that was one of the projects uh, that I um, had uh, when I was at the um, agency. And I think that we can uh, replicate that in other areas. And I think that uh, what Busan lacks is developing a new storyline. So in Yongdusan Park, uh, there is a underlying myth uh, associated with the dragon. And so I think that we can uh, uncover and discover some of those uh, myths uh, in Busan and uh, use that to develop uh, future content. So I think that uh, for a content to be successful, we need uh, to utilize those. And uh, once a uh, content is successful, I think that we can also further develop that uh, to uh, develop tourism and et cetera. So again, I think that uh, my uh, message is that we focus on uh, the existing uh, Busan myth. And because I'm time constrained, I'm going to say one more thing. I'm not sure whether or not you've heard about Nurimaul. Um, I'm outside uh, from Busan and uh, some 
people from outside of Busan may not know, but those of you from Busan may know. But anyways, it's a vessel mimicking a pirate's vessel. So having a simple vessel is not enough to appeal to the audience. I think that you have to have a storyline. And Yongdo Island, also in the past, I realized uh, was used as a base for smugglers in the past. And uh, we also had uh, a record uh, of a female head of a smuggling uh, group. So I think that uh, uncovering and discovering those uh, stories is going to be very useful. And I think that it uh, has a full potential to appeal to international audience. Thank you. Well, I think we can listen to your presentation for a longer time. Uh, it is lamentable that we do not have much time, and I hope we could do business together. And we have listened to three panelists today, and thank you very much for your insights. I also want to thank all the participants watching us online, and I would like to now wrap up today's uh, session. I think uh, we do not need any uh, closing remarks or additional discussion because we had very insightful panel discussion. Please let us give a big hand to all the participants of the session and I would like to ask all the participants to rise from your seats to greet the audience. I think these people are actually the branding experts and uh, experts that are sharing a lot of ideas to create cultural content in Busan.